I parked at a spot that I thought I could sit at, but a security guard came over and said to move. I mean, he didn't actually say any words. I just, I knew why he was walking over and I had to leave. So now I got my food here. And I don't know if you can tell, there's like all this black stuff inside the box. Uh, so, so two things. One, um, when you go to a place like this and the food's been sitting out, I, I think it starts sitting out at like 10. So when you get later, I think it's like a big risk to eat this food. And I'm, I'm like literally seeing the ant like walk on this too. But anyway, so it's a risk to eat the food in the first place. I think when you eat it so late, but I was hungry and this is what I want. And then now I'm opening it up and I'm seeing like how dirty this box looks like. I'm seeing another ant in the box too. So now I'm kind of wondering where the, the box came from. But I'm hungry. I don't think bugs are necessarily gonna hurt you, but food that's been left out possibly can. But I'm gonna chat on on this food right now because I'm hungry. I had to rush home because I got sick. I had to go throw up in the toilet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm like sitting in my own sweat after the gym and I used to do it a lot. Then I realized I break out. And I, can, I mean, I can even see I'm breaking out a little bit now. You're just like sitting in all your sweat, right? You're, you're out on this super hot day, dripping sweat all over your clothes, literally. You just twist them and water comes out of it, all this sweat. So, you know, I, I don't want to keep breaking out. So I need to make sure I get home to shower. So I spent a decent amount of time out and then I just came home to, uh, to shower. But yeah, eating there and chilling and watching the beach is awesome. One of my dreams in life has been to live on the beach or right next to the beach. I wanted that for so many years, so many years. And I told other people that too. There were a couple of things I told other people because <laughs> some people, some of my friends j r reminded me, they're like, hey, when we used to go out <laughs> and drink, you used to say, Oh, one day I'm gonna make it to Japan and I'm gonna marry a Japanese woman. And, uh, you know, I forgot saying that, but it's, it's totally something I would say. That's, I realize that. <laughs> and, I, you know, it kind of faded from my memory. For them, they could remember it clearly. And I went to Japan and I lived there for three months and I decided staying in Japan wasn't for me. And coming over to Vietnam, living near the beach and realizing this is the place for me, just resonates a lot with me right now. I mean, I've always wanted to be near the beach and this is the country that it's happening in. I mean, I do love Vietnam a lot. Just because you live near the beach doesn't mean you have to go all the time. I've spent now, I, I don't even know how many months in in this city, Da Nang, in Vietnam, maybe six months or something like that, being near the beach. There's a lot of days I go to the beach in a row and then eventually I might have a, a whole week or longer without going to the beach. And then I go back to it for a bunch of days in a row. This morning I woke up at 5.30 to go for a run on the beach. I don't set an alarm. I haven't set an alarm for a very long time. Whenever I get up, I'm up. And if it's 5.30 in the morning, then I'll go for a run. Unless it's like raining or something, which I woke up this morning, I thought it was raining. And I, I was like, I'm gonna stay in bed a little bit longer. And then once I realized it wasn't raining, I went out and went for a run and a long walk and then sat and drank coffee out there and just chilled. Life is pretty good when you live near the beach because if you're stressed, you just go listen to those waves. When you live in a city and you get out in traffic, you have stress all the time because traffic is stress. You live in a big city, the moment you go outside, I'm, I'm thinking about Saigon when I say this, the moment you go outside, stress. <laughs> but when you're in a beach town or somewhere that's slower paced, the moment you go outside, there's peace. I won't say there's like ultimate peace here, right? Ultimate peace would be 
I don't know, living in the woods or living on a lake. You know, there's not a lot of other people around. Maybe one day I'll, I'll do that. I think I would enjoy even more peace. Because right now, I still go in and out and like, you know, saying hi to a lot of people each day, which is okay. I mean, an extrovert would absolutely love that. And I used to be really extroverted. Now, I, I could just like, I'd be fine without that. If I just like absolutely have my peace going in and out with, with pure peace or nobody around, that would be fine. Um, it's, it's okay that I don't have that because I really enjoy the living situation I have now. Though maybe one day it'll be like that, you know, when you have a family or something like that. But who knows, because then they need friends. We'll see when the time comes. I'm just happy to be near a beach and can enjoy it whenever I want. And so a question for you, if you feel like the place you're living in isn't the best one for you, why are you there? Why are you in that place? Is it possible to move? One thing I hear a lot of people say when they're in a place that they don't really like is that it's too much of a hassle to move. Oh, yeah, it, it like pains me to hear that, but I know it's true. I know so many people feel that and, and really feel that it's a very, very true statement, like resonating with their soul. It's also one of the reasons why I've been minimalistic for so long, because then I can move so easily. The more stuff you have, the harder it is to move. And I can already feel like myself getting more stuff just being here, knowing I'm here longer. And I'm like, well, when I move, it's going to be more difficult. I know that. But still, it's it's a little bit of difficulty, like a small amount of time of difficulty for potentially years of being in a new place, right? But so many of us prolong that short time of stress or discomfort for the long satisfaction, the long-term comfort. I think it's worth it. I think if there's somewhere else you wanna be, it's important to make that change and not just keep waiting. For what? Like, what, what are you waiting for? Why not? Why not change? Why not? Why not try something else? This is your one life. You don't have to just be there. This can go for other stuff too, like a job. If you don't like it. You don't have to be there. You don't have to do things you don't want especially not for the rest of your life. What is the thing you want to go do and then try it? You know, you don't have to like throw up everything and quit everything and tell everyone F you and leave unless you want to, <laughs> but you don't have to do that. You can just go try the things out that you want to try. And maybe you try it and you don't like it. That's fine. Maybe you try it and you love it and you're like, oh my goodness. Ah, oh, I'm so glad I tried. That life is so much better. Now the rest of my life can be better. That would be great, huh? I still remember, you know, having some really hard times and knowing something could change. I think I've felt that often, like there's something better out there and I kept moving and I kept seeking it. And I'm really glad to have found this. I mean, I'd never in my life would have thought I'd be living and a beach in Vietnam. I thought, I thought to be honest, I'd be on a beach in like Alabama or Mississippi or something. I didn't think I'd live in another country and live on the beach. I really didn't. It was the little tests that got me further and further into more testing. You don't have to do a giant leap right at once unless you want to, you do these small tests. And then when you find more of what you like and you just go with it. And if it takes you to the other side of the world, so be it. That's what speaks to you and you follow what speaks to you. You know, I'm sharing this because this is what, you know, this is what happened with me. It's just traveling around the States and then leaving and going to Central America, which took me to Europe. I didn't really care to be there, honestly. Like so many Americans love Europe and they fantasize about it. I never cared about Europe, any part of it. I 
fantasized about Asia my whole life. So being in Europe and realizing that Asia was where I needed to be <clears throat> or where it was speaking to me was so helpful because once I got here, like you could spend your whole life exploring a small area, right? You could spend your whole life exploring one country. So why not spend a lot of time exploring certain areas, especially if you want to find out where you want to live. Like if you're just, if you're just traveling just to travel, that, that's cool too. But explore the places that resonate most with your soul rather than places people tell you to tell you to go see. And I say that for example, like I, I do not care to see temples that are completely crowded with thousands of people. Oh, it's the worst thing. But I would be happy to go to a temple that's quiet and I can actually meditate in. That would That's cool. I like doing that. And so that resonates with me, whereas someone else might just want to go see the pretty things and they don't want to spend a mo Like maybe they'll like, you know, bow or something like that, but they don't want to spend 30 minutes or an hour meditating. Um, so it's just to each, to each their own. And to be able to know that, like I would have never known that sitting around for hours and meditating in quiet temples was something I would even care to do. I, I've never in my life I would have known that. And then I found myself doing it. I found myself called to go do those actions. I've also been to temples that are extremely packed. And all I think about is like, I'm, I don't really don't care to be in here. Like, you know, I try to meditate, but like still like at different points, it's pretty loud. I, I don't get, I don't feel good when I'm trying to meditate in those kind of areas. They don't resonate with me. And usually like, there's just so much of a flood of people going that not too much of that happens. There's uh, a couple of temples that I have meditated in that were pretty crowded and the sounds going on constantly, but it's not, it's not like my preference. And my traveling was specifically to find out where to live, where I'm very grateful that I have the freedom to be able to do that. Cause I think a lot of other people, you know, only travel just to see the world, which is great. I really think traveling is a wonderful thing. And I really think it's important to understand the cultures too. That's, it's so fascinating to understand the cultures of the world. That opens up your brain. And then you go home with a much bigger perspective of the world that lasts. And if you just go just to see things, that's great. You'll be able to come back to those pictures and the experience will be great, right? You can live life for experiences. I don't wanna uh, talk down about it or anything, but you'll have that momentary experience and then you have the pictures for later. And to build on that, like if you're gonna go do those things, also spend some time like understanding the culture or talking with some people, or whatever it may be, because those, those perspective changes can last with you for a very long time, right? Your mind can always change and alter, but it could last for weeks, or if you find out some really great information or just see how different the world is, it could just open up your brain for the, the rest of your life or get you fascinated to go learn other things. For example, when I was in Japan, I wanted to learn Japanese, right? I'm, I'm super excited, I'm there, but I also wanna to talk to people, I wanna meet people in class, I wanna practice my Japanese, right? I, I'm grateful that I had the time to go do that, to study Japanese in Japan. But I also wanna to go to coffee shops, I wanna sit there, I wanna watch people. This is my, my thing that I like doing is really, really just like understanding the culture and, and how people work and think. Uh, it's so fascinating to me and I'm grateful that I have the time to be able to do that. So if you're like limited on time and you're, and you're like, I gotta go to this temple, I gotta go see that thing, I gotta go do this thing, I gotta go to that park. That sounds fun, right? You might enjoy that a lot. Uh, so don't, don't like say, oh, I gotta sit down in a coffee shop and just watch people or something like that. Uh, but I would recommend if you have the time and you're gonna go sit down in a coffee shop, like if you're with a friend, keep that chatter to a minimum, like ask them if they're like cool, if you just like, watch everything for a while and just like observe the world. I think that's a really good statement because when you're traveling people, sometimes you sit down and, oh, this, 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 and it's like the constant chatter never ends. And so when you're going to stuff that chatter every every moment, a lot when you travel a lot of people that are like there's constant chatter. And because of that, and you're trying to focus on their thoughts, you have no, there's not much space to be able to sit and analyze the world. And that sitting and analyzing the world without chatter, without someone else, taking up your mental space by ch by chatting uh, nonstop, you can really observe some things that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this because 
you know, I've experienced being with people that uh, talk constantly and it's unfortunate, right? I, I, obviously, like I would love the peace and quiet to be able to analyze the world. I, I enjoy that, like, you know, give them attention too. And when I talk to people, I give them my full attention. It's something that I really do. If, if people like just chatter and they don't really pay attention to each other, they're just like speaking and nobody's listening, like that's that's fine. Like I know some people do that, but if someone's talking to me, I give them my full attention. And so if someone's chatting nonstop, then it, become, it becomes difficult for me because it's so much focus that I'm doing uh, without just being able to like pay attention to the world. But I also feel unfortunate for that person as well, because if, they're, if you're speaking, you're not analyzing. Like maybe you're analyzing the words that you're saying and you can learn when you speak. You can, you can learn things about your own brain and your thoughts will start connecting and you'll learn things, but you're missing out on the analyzation of the world. Like if you're speaking, then you're not learning. Um, for example, if, if you're the one speaking, you're not learning from the other person. You're only learning from within you what's happening in your head at that moment. And then if you're speaking, you're not analyzing the world if you sit in quiet for a long time you will learn a lot but that is a difficult thing to do in today's day and age where we have social media and we're constantly looking at stuff and if three to five minutes pass by and we're just staring at the world and nothing's going on oh man you gotta bet most people are pulling out their phone and going to social media i feel like i'm on a, a little bit of a, of a rant um, but I do wonder what the future holds as more and more people use their phones more frequently. The reason I say this is I read somewhere that when newspapers came out, people were spending all the time reading newspapers. So people would be standing on the corner of blocks or sitting down on a bench outside reading a newspaper when newspapers were very new. And people were like, this is the worst thing ever. Like newspapers is, is terrible because people are just spending their time in newspapers. They're not spending their time in the real world. Okay, so I thought that was hilarious and good. I mean, that's, that's what people want to do. They want to put their brain and mind somewhere else. People watch the news, you know, all, all that stuff. But newspaper was something people were taking out and then doing that everywhere. And so now it is your phone. You know, and it might not just be news or what's going on in the world. It might just be like this baby running over here to do something, this cat doing something cute, uh, people dancing, like uh, pranks, whatever it may be, right? Like it's it's just things that's, that's going on. And it makes me curious about how the, how the future will be, right? Like I will say it's nice to turn your brain off. And I feel that most of the time we want to turn our brain off. But the more we do something, the more we train our brain. And the more we're using social media, the more we're training our brain to work in a very short period of time. Every, every scroll, every flip, your brain is being trained to work on shorter spans of time. It's okay, as long as you recognize that and realize like, if you're gonna be spending time doing that, then also spend time reading a book or doing some like longer activity. If you don't want that your your attention span to grow shorter and shorter, or go into a conversation with someone and listen for an extended period of time. Hopefully, you know, when you speak, they'll listen for an extended period of time too. So like this builds your patience, your attention span. Make sure you're also doing that if you're if you're using a lot of social media because you wanna balance it out. If you're not actively trying to keep your patience and your, your your attention span and you're only using social media and doing these quick things all the time, you're gonna have difficulty focusing for long periods of time. I mean, that, you might even end up having difficulty focusing on a movie or a TV show for an extended period of time. It might be like scrolling and having something go on constantly and then turning and then doing this thing. You know what I mean? Like your, your, your attention span is gonna get less and less and less and less and less. So you just gotta train it, whatever way you're gonna train it and using social media, unconsciously thinking about this, you're, you're training your brain to think in a shorter attention span unconsciously. You're, you're not aware. So, you know, hopefully you can, this, this could potentially bring some awareness to that. That's an, another Michael rant. I will let you know if I get sick from the food.
I really hope I don't. It's immune boosting food, like blueberries or matcha, high in antioxidants, eat food that's been sitting out for a while. Don't, don't actually do that. <laughs> I just really hope that I'm fine and maybe my, my gut bacteria is gonna improve from that. I'll leave you with that. Thanks for hanging out, thanks for watching this. And if you have some thoughts, like if you have thoughts about, you know, attention span or traveling, I'd, I'd love to hear them. Because everyone, you know, everyone has their own thoughts about maybe attention span or critical thinking or understanding cultures or um, traveling. When I think about traveling, I give you a lot of my thoughts, right? So I am curious because, I mean, I think the majority of people travel just to see things. Because when I, when I was going to travel and before I traveled, everyone just wrote lists for me to go do stuff, whether I asked or not. And every time I got a list, I was like, I don't really want to do that. Like, that sounds stressful. That's always what it sounded like, stressful. And I think most people like traveling to go do a bunch of different stuff really quickly. And for me, it's not stressful. And so if that's you... Tell me, tell me why you like that. I'm genuinely curious. You know, what is it that you like doing when you travel? Seeing all the things, chilling out, relaxing, getting away from things, getting away from social media, bringing a book to the beach. What is it? I'll see you next time. Peace.